It's upgrade time. What makes for the best workstation in the modern age? You need a powerful PSU so you can power modern GPUs. You're going to want ultra fast networking so you can get good transfer speeds. You're probably going to want lots of cores so you can manage all of the tasks that you have. All the different things you need to do. You're going to need fast M.2 NVMe storage and ample RAM. Racer Z Studios presents the HP Z8 G4 upgrades. Stay tuned for these, there's going to be a whole bunch of future upgrades where we go through and give this system a little bit more speed. Whether it be RAM, networking, dual CPUs, and even the star of today's video, this little enterprise grade storage solution. So what is this little adapter? Well, it turns out you can take the U.2 interface and adapt it to the M.2 interface with these little adapters. They convert the SSF 8639 interface, which I can never seem to get the right way around. There it goes. Okay, good. To M.2 NVMe SSDs. Now that's perfect. Now, how many Benjamins did I allocate to this particular upgrade? Well, I got the NVMe's for around 53 US dollars each, and yes, the prices are still sky high. I would have loved two terabyte NVMe's, but the Lexa NM. 620 isn't half bad. We got 3500 megabytes per second read and 3000 megabytes per second write. Definitely take a look at the terabytes written as well, which is around 500 terabytes. It's not too bad for the price of these NVMEs. And take note, these little adapters are an additional expense, which brings our total to around 150 USD for two terabytes of NVMe storage. Seems really expensive, but what can you do? Now, do you ever get that feeling that you're forgetting something? It's okay, I got, I got you covered. We're not going to forget anything today because, before we close this up, we need to add something from the cool box. What's the cool box? Well, this is thermally conductive silicone. You can tell it's been heavily used. In fact, this particular one here is ideal. Uh, throwback to when I did my HP Z book. It had a bit of a thermal issue, so I guess I'll give you a sneak preview there. Does anyone still use these old laptops? I filmed the whole thing, but I was like, no one's going to watch it. No one still uses them. Maybe you do. Let me know in the comments. I'll make a video for it. But here it is. We've got our little sandwich coming together quite nicely. This is a 2mm thermal pad. It's going to sit on top of that NVMe. It's going to make contact with the aluminium casing. And take note, we can even use some of the larger thermal pads if needs be. But the end result here is a precision cut. Now, if you're expecting a CNC laser cut here, well, I suspect my cutting is almost as uh, good. Don't judge it too harshly, though. Yep, no, that's a near perfectly square cut, as you can tell. Doesn't matter too much, as long as you've got some on there, it should help to keep the NVMe's a little bit cooler. Talking about cool, shall we speed our way through? Now, very important on these particular thermal pads, they do have an insulating plastic layer which helps to keep the thermal pad together. We do have to peel that off, otherwise you can have almost no cooling effectivity. Uh, so very important, commonly overlooked. The fitment process is relatively delicate, as you can tell here, it's not that easy to get them on, but we'll call that square, almost as good as my cutting. And we do need to trim it slightly, so call that an oversight, we probably should have done that before we threw it on, but anyway, we'll trim it, that's nice and square as well, perfect. And now, we can rinse and repeat. Because there are two of these little NVMEs that are going in. You're probably wondering, well, what's he going to do with two NVMEs and one adapter? And how does he connect them up to the system? Stay tuned, we'll deal with that very shortly. But for now, once this is all mounted up, we can quickly slot them in to our adapter. And it should look something like this. And this is where we run into another problem. Don't know why I keep mounting these the wrong way around. You get a 50-50 chance. Gives me USB Type-A flashbacks. Don't know why. But here it is, we've got our first one mounted, there goes the second one, and if you've got a keen eye, you might spot another little mistake here. Because uh, tolerance, I don't know why, but those screws don't give us enough tolerance, so maybe I pick up the wrong packet. Or maybe this is what we're supplied with it, you'd think I'd remember it, because I've actually used a quad adapter of the same design in a previous video. Definitely check that one out, that was a pretty gutsy adapter. My only complaint is the time it takes to undo all of these screws. It's quite a lot. But there it is, low profile screws. I was never worried. Let's quickly throw a few screws in here to keep it all together. And that reminds me of uh, engine assembly. There's always that one bolt that you're left with. We'll call it weight reduction. In this case, I guess it'll be all right. But in motor, maybe not so healthy. 
Now I'm going to throw this into PCIe slot 1 on the HP ZAG4. That particular slot is an X8 mechanical slot with 8 electrical lanes. Now with a little bit of bifurcation magic in the BIOS, we're going to get this thing to run like an absolute dream. Now we'll call this the test fit because that GPU's backplate is a little bit proud, but I will mention if you are this way inclined, you could get one of the single adapters as well, depending on your system's needs. Now, uh, let's test it. I'm not sure this IO brace is going to make it, but I am hopeful we're going to get the back bracket to fit. And, yep, a little bit of scraping noises is normal. That's a lot of scraping noises. It's okay, I'm sure the GPU will forgive me. But now it's at least secured. And uh, you'll see some of the future mods there, like the 10 gigabit network interface card. Stay tuned for a future video on that one. Such a cool little adapter. But definite flashbacks here to the HP Z840, the, uh, should we say, older brother on this particular system, but let's go for it, the BIOS setup. Now if you haven't been introduced to this before, you're welcome, this is HP's Performance Advisor, probably the coolest software that you could use with your HP workstation. Now in this case we're just going to navigate our way through to the BIOS settings, because we need to make some fine adjustments to allow this adapter to actually function properly within our system. First one here is system options we need to ensure we have bifurcation toggled for any slots that we require these adapters for so x4 x4 splitting of the electrical lanes you know actually notice i've got quite a few of these lanes bifurcated which is due to the nature of all the different pci slot adapters that i've got equipped but while we're here there are a few other bios settings you might find of interest things like fast boot quite a handy setting to have toggled there's also your performance settings. I haven't really played with those too much, but you can by all means test them out. And there are several other functions you could by all means check. I will mention legacy support and secure boot could be really important settings to toggle. In my case, I still have secure boot on, but if you were to try and install other OSs, you probably want to toggle those. Okay, now for Windows setup. So first thing is initializing the new disks. Hopefully they do come up with initialization. If they do not, they may have been used before. Now as we go for a simple volume, I'm just going to test them initially to make sure we get the published speeds and make sure both drives are functioning. It's also going to give us a baseline speed for these NVMEs. Now once we've got our drive letter allocated, I think it's useful to give them a unique label so you can keep track of these drives. So initially we'll just call them for what they are, the Lexar NM621TB. I can't do better descriptions than that I'm sure. Now with each one formatted, we should be able to run a crystal disk mark to figure out just how effective these drives are. And sure enough, they net pretty much identical to what the manufacturer specified. Somehow I'm not surprised, that's amazing. Now for the fun part, I have managed to test both of them, but right now we're going to format both of those volumes, and we're going to create a RAID 0 pool. Now this is going to be a striped volume with the idea being that we're going to fuse those two drives in the name of speed. What am I going to use the drive for? Well, video editing. It's an ideal storage library to get some really fast transfers. Uh, why else do you think I was wearing the helmet? It's all about speed. But here it is, Lexar NM620 RAID 0, unique name. Can't be any better than that. Probably shouldn't have toggled uh, format but anyway you won't have to watch through that but keep that in mind fast format far better otherwise it can take uh, quite a while i think this took like three hours terrible but let's launch into crystal disk benchmark let's see how well our raid zero performs keep in mind this is only two nbme so we won't see astronomical speeds but looking at it that's actually pretty decent speed 6900 ish read and around 5400 right now throwback to a previous video we actually tested four different quad NVMe adapters and these speeds are almost at the same level as those quad adapters so that's interesting. Maybe it's the switch between systems. This test was done on the HP Z840 where right now we're on the HP Z8. Maybe that made the difference. But kind of interesting to see these speeds relative to the quad adapters but keep that in mind as well. You do get these in quad adapters like the JHE one there which could give you some extra storage. Now, talking storage, check out a future video, the Ultrium Tape Drive 32080 SAS. Now, it's a little bit on the older end, running on LTO4, LTO5, but still a great way to get some 
secure archiving of your critical data. And this particular one runs on the 1.5 or 3 terabyte uncompressed tape drives. And what's the goal for this device? It's going to be an offline archival storage backup of all the critical data that I have produced over the years. And throwback to the old medium that we used to use in the 90s. Kind of funny how time progresses. Right now these are way bigger than the original. Uh, so much more storage capacity. But stay tuned for a future video. We'll check that out next time. Races E out.